To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, and what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel header and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simiou, coming to you from a very, very sunny, hot and beautiful Dusseldorf today. Um, it's been the first day where the weather's been really, really top since I've been here. Uh, so I'm enjoying it. I'm making the most of it. When I had some lunch, took a walk down by the river, filmed some content, which will be out on the 90 Min channel a little bit later on. And then we're going to go out for some dinner and watch Spain versus France, a game that I'm really, really keen to watch and and kind of study William Saliba, our star man at the back for the French. Can he continue uh, to perform at this incredible level that we've seen from him at the European Championships so far? Could Nico Williams uh, breach that French defence, the player that we're going to talk about on this episode. We're going to talk Nico Williams. We're going to talk Mikel Marino. We're going to bring you the latest on Ricardo Calafiori too. It feels like we're doing that every day at the moment, but reading uh, some of the pieces that have been coming out, reading some of the reports from The Athletic and trying to read in between the lines, I feel like there could be a little bit of a snag when it comes to that particular deal, which we'll get into on this episode. Just before we continue though, if you haven't done so already, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're brand spanking new and if you're listening to us on audio, well, you know what to do. Leave us a review. It really, really does help. Let's start though with our first story. We're going to talk Mikel Marino, the Real Sociedad midfielder that Mikel Arteta is said to be really interested in. He scored the winner, of course, for Spain against Germany in their Euro 2024 quarterfinal victory. I was lucky enough to be there. What a game it was. Mikel Marino came on as a substitute and I thought played really, really well. I was really surprised by sort of his composure in possession, by the fact that he could cover loads and loads of ground and get across the pitch really smartly and effectively. He doesn't look like um, a monster in terms of, you know, maybe like the way Declan Rice does where he kind of eats up the ground around him. But he seems to cover a fair bit of ground. And according to The Athletic, Arteta's a huge fan of his. He's really, um, he's been really impressed by his technical ability, but also what he brings physically, which you don't always say about sort of La Liga-based players. And so that's why I think maybe Mikel Arteta's looking at him and thinking, you are suited to the Premier League. You could do a pretty good job for me. Now, the only problem with this is that he is 28 years old and the Athletics say it themselves. They say, although at 28, he doesn't represent the type of player the Gunners usually go for. Uh, Paraphrasing a little bit, but that's basically what they say. And so, you know, you think about it and you go, 28 years old, it certainly wouldn't be a long-term project signing. And therefore, if I was the one signing the checks, my first reaction would be, okay, well, if you think he is the solution, if you think he's going to tick some boxes for us, then go and get him. If he's the one that you think is the best suited, having scoured the continent, taken into consideration, first and foremost, those players that do fit within the age profile that we like to sign at, and you haven't found an answer, but you think that Mikel Marino is, I won't stop you doing the deal. But there will be a limit in terms of what I'd allow you to spend. This is if I were running the finances of the club. Not every signing has to be a £50 million plus signing. And not every £50 million plus signing is as effective as some of the lower value signings. It, It isn't about that. We have to get out of this mindset of going, well... If we bring in three £80 million plus players this year, then we're going to definitely win the league. You have to find the right profile. You have to find the right fit. You have to find players that complement what you're already trying to do that you think would fit into what you're trying to do seamlessly. And Mikel Arteta seems to be a big fan of Mikel Marino's. He's currently 
at Real Sociedad. And the truth is, I don't know how much it would take to get him out uh, of that particular football club and bring him over to Arsenal. But I, I do think when you consider the fact that he's 28, and look, I've got nothing against signing players of that sort of age group. We've brought players in who were slightly older over the last few years that have come in and helped us quite a bit. They've helped us fill gaps. They've helped us um, take the team on. They've helped bridge that gap between the inexperience and the experience that's required to go on and win things and and compete and you know all right we haven't won anything major yet but you do feel like we're a lot closer as a result of having some of those players and characters around the place as well so yeah um I'm okay with this if this is the player that Mikel Arteta thinks is the answer is the solution but I wouldn't be going crazy on it financially is is kind of the point I'm making here also, according to The Athletic, if Arsenal are to sign a wide player this summer, Nico Williams would be Mikel Arteta's preference. We've talked about him loads over the last few weeks. We've talked about how brilliant he's been at Euro 2024. He's in action tonight, of course, as we mentioned, and everybody will be watching him very, very, very closely, I'm sure, uh, to see if he can deliver at this stage of the competition when it really matters against a really stubborn French defence. I've always said that Nico Williams seems a little bit raw to me and I've always felt that he could improve in certain areas and because he is so young and because he's still on that path of development, you know, I think that you can kind of allow for the fact that he isn't the finished article, if you like. If you look at his stats from last season, really good provider, not so effective in terms of goal scoring from that position. And if he was to come in at Arsenal and compete for a starting place, he'd probably need to pick things up a little bit in that department. But it feels like all the raw materials are there. And that's why I'm not put off by the 50 million euro release clause that we believe he has. Um, you know, we've got a coaching staff at Arsenal and a head coach slash manager now in Mikel Arteta who have proven over time that they can develop players, that they can improve players. We've seen the level of so many rise since their arrival. We've seen players come in for big fees that a lot of us weren't sure about, develop and improve and get to the point where they're a massive key part in a side that is now competing at the very top of the Premier League. So might be a little bit raw, might be not quite where I'd want him to be. Um, but I still think that Nico Williams at 50 million euros represents pretty good value if you think about what it's going to cost you to bring in a assist providing goal scoring winger and you think about his age how well he's done at this tournament how that bumps up his price how that bumps up his value how the fact that Barcelona are interested impacts on that as well and 50 million euros doesn't feel like the end of the world I've heard people say that his wages um, in terms of what he's on at athletic club are quite high uh, in comparison to some of his peers in Spain, which means that you're probably going to have to pay slightly over the odds in terms of our wage structure for a 21, 22 year old in order to convince him to come and get that deal done. But I do think it's partly to do with the fact that athletic club operate in the way that they do. They do sign Basque based players and because the pool of players from which they're able to pick and, and sign is smaller than everybody else's. Obviously, it's their own policy and this, it's fine, you know, but because that pool of players is smaller, what it means is that you end up with a situation whereby when they do unearth a star like Nico Williams and they do find someone who they believe is, you know, a, a central piece to their project moving forward, they normally do pay them a little bit more because they need to give them some kind of incentive to stay at Athletic Club and not have their head turned by your Barcelonas and your Real Madrids at the first opportunity. So, um, you know, Athletic have protected themselves quite well. Um, I do like the look of Nico Williams. And as I say, I don't worry about the shortcomings that I perhaps see in his game at this moment in time, because I think we have a manager and a coaching staff that will take him to the next level, which is ultimately um, what we're hoping to do if we do go out and bring Nico Williams in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is he the one for you? And our main story today is the Ricardo Calafiori deal in doubt that is the question that i am asking today let me know what you think about this in the comment section i'm going to explain the context of this question and why i'm asking it ricardo calafiori for a few days now has seemingly been on his way to arsenal talks uh, was scheduled to continue this week according to fabrizio romano and other sources there's lots of reports saying that look when it comes to arsenal and calafiori there are no problems he wants to come 
Arteta wants him, um, but it's about the two clubs coming to some sort of agreement. However, there was a really interesting line in um, in David Ornstein's piece in The Athletic today. I think it's called The Transfer Notebook or The Transfer Deck or something like that. Forgive me if I've got the name wrong, but basically he he does a transfer piece. And in this piece, there was a really interesting line. He said, not everyone at Arsenal is convinced that paying 50 odd million euros would represent good business. He doesn't mention the 50 million euros bit. I'm paraphrasing a little bit to be clear. But what he says is not everyone at Arsenal is convinced this would represent good business. Now, I'm trying to read between the lines here because I don't know any more than anybody else on where this deal is at, if it's moving at all. But what I would say is that there's probably a couple of concerns that may be being discussed internally at this moment in time. And if I'm guessing what they might be, the first one I think about is the fact that this is a guy who, to a lot of people, has come out of nowhere. Ricardo Calafiori had a really good season for Bologna last season. As a team, as a collective, they did really well and they qualified for the Champions League and they're looking to kick on now as a football club. He was one of the players right at the heart of that, as was Joshua Xerxes, who could be on his way to Manchester United, as we were discussing just the other day. has been linked with Arsenal, but it doesn't look like that is going to develop into anything um, serious from our perspective. But people might be looking and thinking, well, Calafiori has only really had one really promising season. And then he's put in a couple, maybe three really good performances at Euro 2024 and all of a sudden he's flavour of the month and Bologna know this and Bologna are aware of this and they've whacked a ridiculous price tag on a player that wouldn't have even been worth half of that before the tournament started. That's how some people at Arsenal might be looking at this. Now Mikel Arteta is said to really like him and Mikel Arteta's staff have said to have been keeping an eye um you know, on him for a while. So this isn't for Arsenal, I don't think anyway, something that's just come out of the blue. But if you're a businessman, if you're one of that team that does make the decisions collectively and you're trying to figure out, you know, how his value could increase or decrease, I think what Arsenal are looking to do nowadays is bring in players generally that they think they can they can gain on, that they think are at a value and a price that, yeah, is is a hefty price because of the market of today and the times that we live in, but that they believe they can add to that. And in Ricardo Calafiori at 50 million euros, I think that there will be questions within the club as to whether or not they'll be able to add to that. And that's because A, the sample size of Ricardo Calafiori being a really good defender is relatively small. You're talking about one season and a few games, a handful of games at a European Championship. And we've seen players in the past really perform at international tournaments get a big move and then be some of the biggest flop signings we can ever remember. I'm not saying that Ricardo Calafiori is going to be that. And let me be clear, I'm not saying I don't want us to sign him. I absolutely do. Um, I think he is the real deal. I think he is someone that will go on to bigger and better things. But my real concern and worry is the injury history. And I did look into this and I did mention it when we did our scouting report on Ricardo Calafiori. If you go back, the link is in the description below. You can check that episode out. And I talked about the serious knee injury he's had. And I've since been sort of talking to some of my Italian colleagues out here in Germany. And the general consensus seems to be that that knee injury, and I didn't have this context a few days ago, was so severe and so serious that people at the time were questioning whether or not Riccardo Calafiori could ever return to playing top level football. Now he's defied those odds and credit to him. And it shows what a character he is and I mentioned that on the scouting report as well the fact that he's come back from that the fact that he's um, had to go away from Italy which almost probably felt like a banishment given that Serie A based players don't really like to go abroad generally speaking and then he's come back and proved himself it shows you the type of man and the type of character he is but from talking to some of my Italian colleagues and hearing about the severity of that knee injury people talking at the time about how he'd lost so much muscle around the knee that there were concerns that he was ever going to be able to put that right and fix it. I guess you could be forgiven for thinking, well, maybe then the Premier League is not for him. Because the last thing Arsenal want to do is go and spend north of 50 million euros to bring in another 
Takahiro Tomiyasu. And I don't mean that disrespectfully to the Japanese international. I think he's a really good player. But I'm talking about somebody who is fit for six weeks and then is out for six weeks and then returns for another six and then is out for another six. Basically, someone that you can't rely on. Um, knee injuries are very common these days, but they are injuries that do have the potential, not in every case, but do have the potential to really impact you. And we've seen so many players suffer severe knee injuries and never get back to the levels that they were at before. Now, with Calafiore, it's a bit different because he started... Um, at a relatively low level, was sent off to Basel. Jose Mourinho wasn't a fan. We talked about that in the scouting report. Again, check it out. The link is in the description. And he's kind of come back better and stronger. But the step from Serie A to the Premier League and the greater physicality, that might be a problem. And so, again, look, I don't know this, but if I'm trying to guess why David Ornstein is saying that not everyone at Arsenal is convinced that this would represent good business... The only two things I can think of are A, that they think we'd be overpaying because of how good he was at the Euros and that actually that's not a real representation of where Ricardo Calafiori is today as a player and over the course of a 38-game season and beyond, you'll see that. Or they're concerned about this injury history and if you look at the number of days he's missed through injury, obviously when he suffered that injury 18-19 season, I think he missed 300 days um, then there were seasons where he missed 100 days, seasons where he missed 50 days. Uh, last season, he was very good in terms of staying fit. But is that something that can be maintained? That's probably what the club are questioning. We know that Mikel Arteta is keen. We know that Calafiori is keen. But as we've said before, it's not just Mikel Arteta that makes the decisions at Arsenal. It has to be a worthwhile investment in everybody's eyes for them to take the jump. So... Is the deal in doubt? I mean, I've heard nothing to say that it's off, not that I'm in the know much and that you should look to me for breaking news, but I certainly haven't seen anything or any suggestions that the deal is dead and that it's not going to happen. But it does seem like there are people at Arsenal that are perhaps not as convinced as Mikel Arteta that this is the right thing for the football club. And will that be a problem as negotiations continue if Bologna continue to dig their heels in and say, no, we're not accepting anything less than whatever, are we going to get to a point where Arsenal just go, OK, then thank you, but no thank you. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments section on this one because, um, yeah, I'm a bit torn. I'm a bit conflicted. Like, I don't want Arsenal to take an unnecessary and stupid risk and I certainly don't want to go into next season having sold Jakub Kivi or who's been linked with a move away as a result of Calafiori coming in. And then have Calafiori out and taking up his time on the treatment table. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a really difficult one because I'm really a fan of the player. But if there's a great risk attached to it, I can understand why the club would go, thanks but no thanks. Let me know your thoughts. Does Ricardo Calafiori's injury history, does it concern you? Should it concern Arsenal? And should it put Arsenal off completely? Should they just look at the fact that he was fit for last season and just plough on and move forward with it or should they just be a bit more cautious in terms of what they're willing to spend they know they've got the players buying which is a massive thing um, because he'll be pushing from his side as well let me know your thoughts on how Arsenal should proceed with this not saying the deal's off but it sounds like not everybody at Arsenal is convinced that this is the move the club should be making let me know your thoughts in the comments section below thank you for joining me as always like subscribe uh, share, leave a review, all the rest of it. Get involved in the comments and I'll see you all tomorrow with the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.